How's it going, my lovely Death Disciples? I am the Shadow Creeper, and today we're going to continue our Banner Saga Let's Play. Where last we left off, we had been following Rook and the gang, and they had been looking for a safe place where they could rest and relax after having escaped from Skogar. Um, but unfortunately, we lost the Chieftain. Uh, he died while we were distracting the Dredge, and um, then we came across... Uh, uh, upon Frostfeller, where apparently refugees are being denied entrance into the main citadel, and uh, now there we discover that there is a bit of a gang war going on, and we are now here with um, the with um, uh, Hakon's group now, and um, uh, in the aftermath of uh, the pr the Varl Prince's death, and now. We're simply just going to try and figure out how we could get to the Varl capital from this point forward. And now Hakon is in charge be, um, himself. So with that, um, we have people we need to talk to. So without further ado, let's just get started with you. What have you got to say for me? I'd ask how you're dealing with Wagner's death, but I already know the answer. Do you? Steady old Mulgar. Which is good. Steady old Mogar, which is good. I know most of these Varl, but they're not under my command. They came to follow Wagner. Tell you the truth. I wouldn't want to be in your position either. Anything you could tell me about the caravan? Throw together this many Varl, half of them want to hit each other, the rest want to be left alone. Anyone I should keep an eye on? There's a couple of clan leaders trying to show off for each other. Not a big deal. I've got it under control. The fighters we just got from Strand aren't bad, but they're unruly. Give it a few days. And there are a few moaning about fighting for you instead of Wagner. Those are the ones to worry about. What about Ludin's men? They don't want to hear anything. F they don't want to hear anything from me. I know that. Any problems? Could be. Ludin's pet Varl is named Bercy. I'm not sure where he came from or what his deal is. Bastard knows how to fight, but there's something I don't like about him. His girl in red is scary too. Irsa. She's probably the best fighter Ludin's got, to be honest. I've overheard some of the Varl call her the witch. Ooh, she sounds like my kind of person then. Why? The flaming arrows, I think. It's a good trick, but the fire upsets our Varl more than the dredge. Still doesn't make much sense. Which? They're not scholars, Hakon. I think they're mostly just afraid of her. That makes no sense. Don't let her find out. Haven't you ever wanted to be in command? More than I am? <laughs> Any more rope and I'd hang myself. I doubt that. I forget you weren't around back then. At one point I had more rope. I hugged myself. So no, I'm not interested in command. It's all yours. Thanks. You think we're walking into a death trap? This many Varl? No, we should be alright. Things could get rough though. I don't like being the one to send Varls to their Varl to their deaths. I like worrying about myself, and that's the extent of it. Who would have expected Vognir to drop like that to a couple of slag? I'm still wondering what happened. He had hundreds of dead slag to his name. I don't get it. it just happens sometimes. No big moment. I'm sure it surprised him more, even more than us. Although I have to wonder. Nah, never mind. Anyways, I worry about the warriors. You worry about not doing something stupid. That's asking a lot. <laughs> what were you holding back about, Wagner? I'd rather not say, Hakon. Why not? It's the kind of thing that gets stuck in your head, and you need a clear one. It's better if you let me worry about it. Hmm... Well, I kind of feel like I know what you're thinking, so you may as well spit it out. Sounds important. Tell me. How did Wagner die? He ran into Dredge. 
wasn't expecting it. When we found him, he was lying face down, like he was struck from behind. Did he really get taken down by some random slag? Who else was there? I knew that's the conclusion you were going to be wondering about. You think Luden? He probably didn't, but... Damn it. We should keep an eye on that bastard. If you see anything else, tell me. I will. Let's get back to it. Let me know if you need anything else. I would... Uh, oh. Let me know if you need anything else. I will. Wrong voice there. Sorry about that, everybody. And, Evan, how are you doing? You knew him well, didn't you? Oh, Ubin, not Evan, sorry. Bognir? No. Ah, uh, well, I don't know, I remember him. Always rushing around with some important business, but I never knew him. Never got a chance to talk much. Longer than I did, in any case. I suppose so. When he spoke, Val listened. I knew that. I could use help there. Sorry, help. The Shrivener leans back, considering the sentiment. I've seen worse. They respect you for your ability to swing an axe. They need to respect you for your actions. But you're not talking to the right Varl. Mulgar's got some skill there. Most I can do is hold a quill. What are you always putting down in that journal? How do you mean? What do I write? I write what happens. I've got a banner in Arboring for that, you know. You mean the long banner? Yes, the Menders wove up something that writes its own history. You want my opinion? I don't trust it. No? It tells a broad story. I think there's some value in the narrow. Whose story does it write? Mine? Theirs? Ludin's? Gods forbid. <laughs> you relic. The gods have been dead a long time. Oh, have they? Old habits, I suppose. I heard you were a terror in your day. Do you know how old I am? Dare I ask? That is a very important question. That you do be very careful about asking. I'm competing, you know. Nobody knows how old we Varl can get, naturally. There's one by the name of Snorri. He's got a few years on me. Just hunkers and gruff I'm collecting rhyme. Bastard might actually beat me. Another one named Krumer is close, I think. But the adult son of a bitch welcomes a, still welcomes a fight. He'll probably be off before I am. Although... The, sh the Skrivener gestures around him as if to remind you of the current situation. You chuckle. <laughs> anyway, point is, what difference does it make? I'm just a delivery baron for Yorinder now. Can't remember half of what I've done. Hence the journal. Hence? Don't get fancy on my behalf, Hakon. Okay, I won't. What do you suppose happened to the sun? Gods, how should I know? Never seen something like this before. Are you worried? Some of the Varl in the caravan think the world's coming to an end. Others think it's the best thing that could happen. No more black months. I'll take it if it ends. If it's the end, I'm ready. What about the rest of us? To the deaths with you. Huh. <laughs> Get some rest. Always more marching to do. I've hoofed more hills than a horse born with a grudge. Don't worry about me. Alright then, what have we got for our heroes? Got any promotions we need to give? I, Mulgar, yes, you need a promotion. Let's go ahead and give it to you. And, uh, yes, I would like all of the... Oh, wait, you're a shield master, so that means, uh... Let's give you more armor, then. I would have finished off the armor breaking, but, you know, tank's got a tank, so, uh, yeah. And that'll do for now. 
And what have we got for the map? I promise not to spend too much time on lore this time, but uh, I might explore a little bit. I want to know everything about this place. It's just what I do. I like knowing as much lore as I possibly can. But uh, I promise not to make it too long. Let's see now. Where have I not looked at? I don't think I've looked at Richhorn, have I? One of the six horns built into the foot of the Long Reach, Richhorn looks out over Dangler's Bay and Strong. Built at the time when dredge regularly emerged from the deep fjords nearby, threatening commerce, over time the dredge diminished near Ridgehorn, then stopped altogether, the fort falling into disuse. I haven't really looked over in the central area. I mean, I've looked over here, obviously, but let's take a look at some of the stuff here. Karlschuss, yeah, I actually read that. Karlsvat. Everyone remembers that the lake in the midst of the Red River is the final resting place of Karl, a key figure in the First Great War, integral to ending the strife between men and Varl, but what most forget is exactly how he ended up at the bottom of that lake. Oh yeah, Karl, I remember him. Findal Pass. The Findal Pass refers not only to the pass that the Wyrmscale Mountains, but all- uh- uh, not only to the pass through the Wyrmscale Mountains, but also the road that goes from Strand to Borsgard. It passes perpendicular to the Red River and makes a picturesque, if not occasionally perilous, travel route. Well, I'll take it anyways. Not Mort. This great field is home to Varl who breed here giant pack animals called Yawks, prized for the ability to pull supply-laden carts and carry heavy loads without rest for long periods of time. Though yawks are bred in many places, those from Notmot are highly regarded and sell for unusually high prices. I see, and ooh, Dane stones. Lacking the carvings of god stones, some claim these curious circles of rocks to be the top of an enormous long buried crown of the gods. The only known truth is that nobody knows how they got there, including the menders. Hmm. I think I remember there were actually stones like this in Scotland, especially in like the, uh, the high, uh, I don't remember what the, archip the archipelago is necessarily called, but something like that in the, uh, Northern Islands, uh, the, um, you, you'll know what I mean. Bura Pass, at Einar Toth, the first Varl King found himself unable to push further into the north, cut off by a vast gorge at the crook of the Wyrmscale Mountains. He had built a bridge of such massive construction that it takes nearly three days to cross on foot. As the legend goes, the Varl only managed to build it by filling the gorge with the bodies of Dredge and working atop them. Einar Toft, have I? Um... Varl... Okay, yeah. To home to the home of the first Varl King, Eimer, who carved his empire into the crook of the Bradabrek and Wyrmscale Mountains. The Varl Fortress hewn into the rock itself eclipses all but the greater accomplishments in the north. Uh, oh wait, I read that already. Um, I think there are plenty- Oh, oh yeah, there are plenty of things in the north I didn't necessarily read about. The Frozen Tombs definitely is a good start, actually. On the coast of the Silver Stone are a series of massive, evenly spaced glaciers visible from Skrymirstead, which the Varl King Skrymir fancied to shape as fitting tombs for himself and his peers. Not long into the carving of the first glacier, as problems started to become rampant, the Varl, the Varl realized what an enormous waste of time the entire endeavor would be, and abandoned the project with half of the face of Einar carved into the first glacier. Oh. Craigsfjord. The, per the precarious inlet of Craigsfjord is barely a fjord at all, more of the collection of floating ice sheets that have crashed into each other until some deep cracks were formed further inland. Fraxberg. An ever-shifting spiderweb of glaciers and ice flows, Fraxberg uh, was ironically given the name of a town due to the sheer number of, number of wrecked and abandoned longships that have found themselves permanently docked in its harbors. Hmm. Valka Jokul. At the Great War's end, it was the Valka, the first menders, who would push the dredge so far into the north that they were no longer a threat. Some believe the Valka committed genocide of an unfathomable magnitude. Others believe the dredge were forced to return underground, for not even they can survive these bleak, lifeless ice plains. In any case, if the dredge could be said to inhabit any lands, it is those named after their vanquishers. 
Hmm. Okay, then. Learned about genocide. That's always... Anyway. Step... Step A's of silence. Or step A. I don't know if that last S is a silent S. Or is it steeps? I don't know how it's pronounced when it's spelled like that. Deep in the featureless plains of the Valka Yokel, early explorers found ice fields that, through some strange chance or magic, are inexplicably free of wind, snow, or life at all. They return saying that the air is still so is so still and silent as to be unbearable. Hmm. Then how did you explore this far up to give these names? Nordskarl. A river running through the ice-covered grounds of Valka Yokul, which somehow manages to flow year-round. Despite the freezing temperatures, many who know something about the Northlands predict it will eventually break off, possibly pulling apart the hammer and the anvil and reshaping the area near Dunder's beard. The hammer, the counterpart to the anvil placed by the gods to smash the ice here in the north. It is more likely that there was once a land bridge connecting the anvil to the, hand to the hammer, and that the shifting ice would crash against itself repeatedly, but this is a decidedly more mundane explanation. Weaver's Eye Not many could tell you the name of this remote hunk of ice, and of those who can, it is debatable whether it refers to the eye of a needle, or the loss of sight that comes along with the blinding ice. Stem Near Dunder's beard rests a curious exception, an island of solid stone seemingly untouched by the surrounding ice and glaciers. Though explored from end to end and top to bottom, there doesn't seem to be anything exceptional about the massive boulder, so it remains a simple oddity. The Strait of Haros. The Strait of Haros is one of the more aptly named passages. Watery grave to hundreds of longships then endeavor to explore the frozen north to find northerly passage to the east east coast. The ever-shifting ice flows and glaciers make the strait nearly unmappable, and soon, without much reason to pass through in the first place, it became unused by men or varl. Mournforth Tying The tongue in, on which rests the spear, Mournforth Tying could be considered, all things relative, the most reasonable place to settle in the far north, if there were any reason to do so. The snow and frost storms that rage around it leave the inland relatively calm and temperate. Fraskoi. The first ships to sail down the Fraskoi were surprised to find themselves smashing the headlong, uh, smashing themselves headlong, uh, bleh, into solid rock and ice near the spear. Not just because the passage ends abruptly, but because the weather here is so terrible that one can rarely see more than a couple feet in front of their faces. Dunder's Beard, an enormous land of ice separate from the rest of the world by the frozen strait. Dunder's Beard is the sort of place you name after the gods and leave to them as well. The few who have explored the blasted wasteland have either found nothing or never been found again. The Vetter Sea. The Winter Sea in the north strikes a precarious balance between frozen and traversable, but fast-moving flows usually keep it from icing over completely. This, however, makes little difference when there is nothing across the sea to travel to, and no ports of note along, uh, the, co along the east coast to travel between. Okay, that's gonna be the last one, so I think I'm good on the lore here. <laughs> Alright, with that taken care of, let's go ahead and leave this place. Now, uh, where exactly are we heading to again? I completely forgot. Oh, look at that, says Mogar. In the hills, more dredge. In, in the hills, more dredge. No more than a dozen, though. We could just easily pass by as rush as rush up there to slaughter them. Luden overhears. That's a dozen dredge heading towards Strand, he says. You ask him when he started. To, you ask him when he started to care about Strand. I don't, he replies. I thought you did. Hmm. We'll deal with it ourselves. The caravan stops and waits while you lead a small detachment of the hillside to take care of the dredge quickly. You tell Luden to stay by the caravan. He folds his arms and mutters something about being treated like a child. Eh, uh, don't worry. Oh, I got this and- Oh, Eric decided to come. Okay, yeah, sure thing. Let's, uh, let's have you come along, sure. However, I'll put you, like, right there. I think that'll work.
That way you should be able to be in the right roster not to get yourself killed, but also be able to get yourself some kills. Although, uh, let's have you start simple. Oh, no, wait, actually. You, mm, actually, no. How about you guys switch places? That should were about do it. And, uh, actually, no, you get to be right next to Mulgar. All right, Hume, don't worry. You'll be fine. Just stay dealing with that guy. And, uh, we'll attack him in... We could take down uh, more than half his health, so sure, why not? There we go. Gotta get the nice and warm up in there. And uh, let's see. Go for the armor, sure. But, uh, not gonna worry about using my willpower on it. <laughs> really? Right in the health. That's just rude. Okay, you humans really need to work on your damage. Only going for the armor. Kinda was helping you do better, but okay. Okay, really? Really? You're, you're all just gonna gang up on poor hack on there. That's just rude. We'll go with the normal attack. You know? Okay, hack on. Oh. oh. Okay, that's not good. That's really, really not good. Okay. Um. <clears throat> any centering impacts I could bring? Added strength and armor damage to target and adjacent enemies. Hmm. Let's actually just have you withdraw a little bit, hack on. Not safe for you. How about you just deal with my tank? That sounds like a good thing to me, honestly. Yeah, he, he'll take the place here. And, uh... There we go. That should make things easier. Alright, you want to ignore Eric there? Well, Eric's got a little something for you again, mister. There we go. How's that for your armor? Uh, I, I feel like someone else is now taking the role of tank at the moment. Um, you got an ability that can affect more than one person, so uh, use it. Oh, I, okay, that kind of works. That, that works decently. Really? Ugh, I tried so hard just to give you the opportunity to kill someone, and this is how it, it's repaid. I see how it is, hack on. Even though I did unintentionally put you in the position of being the tank. Alright, Eric, you're my level one, so you kill this one at the least. This should do it. There we go. Alright, let's see. Which one of you is the weaker one? You're both exactly the same. Uh, so how about we deal with you? Right in the armor. Oh, and it affected the other one too. Nice. Okay. I got this one. Perfection. Oh, I see. Just go after the Hume. That's fine. He's gonna get himself another kill. He's gonna get a promotion. It's a shame Hakon couldn't get one, though. Rude. Let's go for another one. Perfect. All right, Mogar. Let's get you one. Let's get you to do some damage. Let's go right for the string. There we go. 
Oh, I see you decided to go right for the armor. Okay. Well, uh, about that. This ain't gonna be pleasant for you. Just letting you know. And another promotion available. All right, so Strand should be safe. Ada gets a promotion, Mogger gets a promotion, and, uh, well, Hakon's injured at the moment, so, uh... Yeah. Hakon. You can hear Luden's hard-booted trot as you set up camp the first day and brace yourself. Can we speak as equals? We can try. It seems clear to me you plan to kill a lot of dredge along the way, am I right? Why do you ask? Because since we left Arborang, the Varl have been acting like I need protection. Don't assume only the Varl can fight. Do you understand me? That is my banner we fly to Grothheim. The banner of Arborang. I insist on joining the battle. Almost got it in your first encounter and ready for more. Whatever you like, Prince. And, uh, I expected more resistance. From Wagner, maybe. They tell me you were his kinder. That's why you're in charge now. Some sort of next of kin barbell thing? Don't you take on his responsibilities? In my own way. Then stop acting like I'm a thorn in your side. When in nearly 200 years, it's hard to take a 20-year-old man. Is that right? Seriously? You better start. We'll both be kings someday. That's the last thing I need to think about right now. Ludin looks as you, at you as though you just punched yourself in the face. He heads back to his tent before saying whatever was on his mind. Well, I mean, he's gonna get what he wants, so... On exertion. You've gotten some characters with high exertion. Don't overlook uh, this important stat. Exertion lets you add more willpower to your actions. Want to add more than one star to your attack? Upgrading to 3 exertion lets you add 3 damage to every attack or move 3 spaces further than usual if you got the willpower for it. Remember, each stat is equally important in combat. Choose wisely. Alright. Well, first things... Oh, we got more people to talk to. You have a moment? As you approach, the bear see he lowers the book he was reading. He doesn't strike you as the book reading type. Your Bercy. Your Hakon. We've gotten that out of the way, haven't we? I have some questions. Say what you want to say. What's a Varl doing working for a Luton? What's a Varl Duki doing working for another Varl? What difference does it make? It looks like you're in charge right now, so do me a favor and don't get Luton killed. He's important to you? No, but that's one way to put it. Where'd you learn to fight? Same way as you, by fighting. You know what I mean. I robbed well-protected merchants for at least one man's lifetime. Is that what you mean? Yeah, not anymore. I've had a lot of jobs. Can I trust you? What a loaded question. Depends what you mean. Whose back will you have if things go wrong? Assume I'm looking out for myself, and you'll figure it out. Does Luden understand that? Luden doesn't even understand that half his army here is just to protect him from the people he talks to. That won't keep you any longer. See you on the battlefield, O leader of Varl. You could join us. I'm where I want to be. Don't forget what I said about keeping Luden alive, got it? As you step away, you can't help but wonder if there was a bit of a threat behind that grave request. Ah, there you are. Yrsa, right? She watches you approach with her head tilted back and points a thumb towards Luton's tent. No, here for you. Oh? Can we talk? Yrsa shakes her head no, a smile on her lips, eyelids and low. 
Why not? I don't. In those two curiously contradictory words, I get two- you get two impressions. She has a beautiful obsidian voice, and this might be a complete waste of time. She watches you expectantly. You don't talk? No. You do, though. I don't. <laughs> it's about the... your Luden's bodyguard? No. He's mine. Before you have the chance to be confused, she cackles, abrupt and loud, then looks slightly, slightly embarrassed. You are his personal guard belt. Her expression changes to, of course. How did you end up with someone like Luton? Luck. It's about the flaming arrows. She raises an eyebrow. Varl and Fire don't get along. All you get is a shrug. If you're going to use them. She pulls an arrow. There's a flick of the wrist you don't quite catch. Suddenly a bird combusts in the tree behind you and falls to the ground smoldering. Half the camp has turned to watch. Don't tell me not to. Well, this has been fun. She crosses her arms, a hand on her chin, and cocks her head to one side. Until next time, Mirsa. Hakon. You stop and look over your shoulder. I am a witch, so be careful. She puts her forefinger to her lips with a soft sh shh. You depart, not quite sure what to make of that. So she's a pyromancer. I like that. But uh, did she really need to combust that poor bird? That's just mean. Anyway, you're up for promotion. Can renown, sure thing, and you get all the armor. Hooray, congratulations. Oh, and there's, uh, I don't think I've read your lore. Mulgar's an old hand in Varl culture. Long on the front line of the fight against the Dredge, he's had the occasional brush with leading a clan of his own, but eventually settled well into commanding Vognir's personal army of Varl warriors, and is highly respected amongst them. Hmm. And have I read yours? Hakon is something of a legend in Varl culture. When he met Vognir, he was during, it was during the Second Great War, in which the two became known for cutting a swath through dredge where others were struggling just to stay alive. Vognir was always the charismatic leader, but there was no question about which of the two would win in a fight. And Eirek, you are ready for promotion. There we go, and, uh, let's see here, um, let's get you more willpower since you seem like the charismatic kind of guy, you're also a warden. Adik is the guy who gets stuff done for the governor of Strand, though for a man with heavy responsibility, he seems to have an awful lot of freedom in his methods. Plenty of warring clans within Strand have tried to take him down, none have succeeded. Eventually, he earned himself the nickname, the Iron Turtle. Okay. And uh, let's see if I can get anybody else. Ludin, the Spearmaster. Ludin is the Prince of Men, the first heir of a vast kingdom. Though disliked by his peers and rivals on account of his highborn attitude, few question his intelligence, combat skills, or courage. Hmm. Well, I mean, he hasn't killed anybody yet, but we'll see. Irsa. Okay, okay, those are pretty decent. What have we got for you? Not many people know much about where Irsa came from, but ever since Ludin became old enough to train, Irsa has been close by. Rumors used to spread about a romantic relationship between the two until Irsa found out about them, and then suddenly they stopped. Those who have spent much time near her have described the woman as intimidating. I wonder why. And finally, there's Bersi. What have we got for you? Okay. Some decent stats. Could really work on that uh, armor breaking and uh, exertion. Mm, stats aren't necessarily that great, honestly. Of all of Ludin's traveling companions, Bersi is the most likely to stand out. Being a literal giant amongst men, even Ludin seems afraid of him, which may be the primary reason he hasn't been sent away. On the rare occasion, it has been what whispered that the Varl doesn't even work for the prince, but some other group altogether. 
What is well known is that he's already saved Ludin's life on more than one occasion. Hmm. Alright then. Good enough, I already read his lore, so uh, I think we're good on that, and uh, we could definitely use a few days of rest. We could definitely handle that. Perfect. Okay, and everybody's healthy, especially Hakon, since he was the only one injured, so Hakon's wounds have been healed now, and we can just continue onwards. You overhear a conversation while marching alongside the warriors. I'm happy to stomp some slags as much as the next far, but I didn't join up to take orders from Hakon, says one. Apparently he doesn't realize you're within earshot. Not willing to die for him, either. Hmm. Challenge him to a fight. Who will you take your orders from? You ask loudly. Vognir's dead. We can decide right now. You raise your fists. He does the same reluctantly. His best shot's not bad, but you've had a lot worse. You grab him by his horn, swing his entire massive frame through the air, and plant him into the ground. What's his name? You ask his companions. Gris? Take care of Gris, you reply. You hear them laughing at his misfortune as you wander off. Yes, yeah, sometimes you just gotta lay down the law a little bit. If you want them to respect you. Signs gave me some renown. A small gathering of tents come into view. A group of merchants from the look of it. You ask what they're doing here. We were camped out at the Godstone ahead, one tells you, leaving an offering to Dangler, as one does. His expression turns. Dread started appearing out of nowhere. Some of us stayed, thought the Godstone would be safe, but damned if I know why. We've been we've been dodging them since we left. Hmm. You have anything to trade? Not much, he replies. Anything of value we left at the Godstone. I've never seen this many Varl in one place before. You're off to deal with those dredge. You nod. You could part with some supplies if you need them. Hmm, we'll take them. How much? I'll give them freely. Clearing the road is more than we could ask. I have one request, though. My wife's brother stayed at the Godstone. You'll know him by a necklace with many gold rings. If you see him, say we are safely in Strahd. You agree and the merchants continue onwards. There we go. Made up for the supplies that I used in resting. Oh, morale decline though, but uh, hey, we're still in good morale. The caravan slows unexpectedly. Word travels down the line and then to Mulgar, who tells you, Dredge know we're coming. Probably saw us back at Thitterfell and did their usual lurking. Could have been bad if we pl plotted into them, but we saw them first. Dredge watch you, waiting to see what you do. When's the last time you commanded a few hundred hack on? Asked Mogger. Don't overthink it. The warriors can take care of themselves. War. When you come across more enemies than your party can handle, you'll engage in war. Give your army orders to fit the situation, but be prepared to get your own hands dirty too. By making battle easier for yourself, you end up with higher casualties. Or, you can take burden on yourself with a harder battle, but save more lives. If you're ever desperately outnumbered, it may be best to run, avoiding battle completely. Dredge line the battlefield. Weapons drawn. The fight seems inevitable. You take a quick, quick head count. It must be at least 503 of them. You have 185 fighters and 466 parl at your side. <laughs> yeah. Because human fighters are just so pathetic, they have to be put into multiple categories. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Varl are literally just, Hey, you could be a peasant Varl, but guess what? You know how to beat some ass like any good-ass warrior. So, <laughs> sorry, you pathetic human-ass bitches. Anyway, so, uh, 185 plus uh, 466, that would be, uh, let's see... Um, six hundred and four... Uh, fifty-one? Yeah, six hundred fifty-one total. Let's see, uh, let's start with formations. You start comparing weaknesses and strengths, taking into your account terrain, morale, and the look of your enemy. If you're careful, you should be able to keep your forces balanced. Give the order. 
You start rallying your forces and gather your allies to your to you, preparing to enter the fray. Let us begin. All right, let's see. I think we're good with what we got here. I will let my tank go first, however, and uh, let's have Luden and Eric switch places. Irsa can go last, though. I think she's got this. I think we got this under control. So let's do this. Oh, okay, this is, uh, oh, okay, um, no, 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 you're, you're, you're not gonna go right into battle like that, girl. Uh, <clears throat> we'll have you right there, and hack on, I think you got this one. I think that should do, maybe? And then... We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm gonna have you actually go over there. Yeah, I think that'll, uh, do for now. Alright, Mulgar. Let's have you, uh, do a little bit of softening up with this guy. Oh, really? Go for the archer first. I see how it is. And, uh, Hakon, here's your first kill. Okay, uh, Luden, you got a spear? Go ahead and stab him. Or maybe. Oh. Oops, went for the armor anyways. Oh well, at least make him easier to handle. Hack on, don't get yourself injured when you just got yourself healed. And, uh, let's have you use Tempest on this guy. Should be effective, right? Not really. Oh, poor looting. Okay. I was worried if that was actually going to kill you. Ooh, effective. Okay, Irsa, we're gonna have you just back up a little bit. Ooh. Slag and burn. Can you reach that? Trap an area laying down coals, which do one strength damage. Uh, yeah, trap that area. Oh. Oops. Sorry, I should have thought better on that idea. Okay, Loden's still fine. He's good. I'm gonna go ahead and break your armor again. There we go. Is he? Oh, come on! Okay, see how it is. Get down most of your strength there, little one. Okay, so Gunolf is now uh, injured. That's fantastic. Okay, the impale causes knockback and target bleeds when moving. Let's go for this one. Let's go regular attack for this. Really? Really now? For the armor! <laughs> Alright, uh, Irsa? Are you able to shoot him, or... Should we... Yeah, I think we should... Let's move you here. Take out the armor! Completely. Okay, Hakon's dealing with a few problems. Oh boy. Okay, Hakon, take your first kill. With pride. There we go. Promotion. And they both died in the exact same spot again. Can you stop beating up poor Ludin? Okay, we're gonna need you to exert. Okay. Um. 
how about this? We move you over here and impale this fucker. That didn't quite work as well as I thought it would. And down he goes. <sighs> okay, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be. Uh, Irsa, I'm gonna have to rely on you to take care of this one. Right there. There we go. Not quite as effective as I was hoping, but I'll take it. Bring the pain. I don't think that did as much damage as I wanted. Oh, and there goes Irsa. That Hakon could get himself another kill. Also kill that guy too. That god's getting himself quite the kill count. Let's wipe out that armor. You are le dead. And Hakon once again is dead or injured. Okay, a lot of injured people, as it would turn out. You're really gonna have to go for that armor, even if you can't really do much. Oh no, we have no more willpower. That is not good. Ooh. I felt that. I felt that. Keep going for the armor. Everyone is injured as fuck. Keep going for it! See? He can handle it. Mulgar can handle this. Now we go for the sword. Yeah, no more armor, and now you die. You take a moment to survey the battlefield. The enemy is pushed back all the way down to the line. You could take this opportunity to pull back and leave combat immediately. On the other hand, chasing down more dredge would rally your fighters and save a few lives. You won't have, to have, you won't have time to rest or change your party, but a chance to loot your enemies might even reveal items they took from previous victims. Let's kill a few more. You attack any dredge still brave enough to face you. Mulgar's got this. Okay, that was a bit more armor damage than I was expecting. Oh. That's a problem. Oh no. Okay, he's still got armor, so that's something. Losing a bunch of armor or something. Oh uh, no, he's he's not gonna make it. Defeat. Okay, we bought it. we did kill a bunch of them, but we lost thirteen fighters, six fall, and six something. We're definitely gonna have to take a rest after this fight. You black out as you fall and come to again amongst the warriors you were able to escape the battle. They carried you from the scene. You've lost a lot of good warriors. Not much uh, left to do but push on. I mean, actually considering that's pretty good. We lost only 13 fighters and 32 Varl. Um, and I mean, you, you guys got injured. And considering we were up against 503 dredge, that's a pretty good deal if I'm being perfectly honest. So I think we did good there. We took on the hard fight, but, uh, more people survived. Margaret comes to you sporting a dour expression. There are more warriors than usual claiming illness lately. I don't think they're faking it. I've seen them vomiting or stumbling around. 
Humans seem to be suffering from something, too. Some kind of disease? I can't prove anything. But I think some of the rations may have been poisoned. Before you can respond, he continues. Don't spread paranoia. Maybe nothing. I found nothing wrong with the food. Most of us aren't ill. What do you think? Hmm... It might not be the food. See if you can find some other connection. A couple hours later, Mulgar comes to you again. I don't see any pattern to it. Some of the sick have faced dredge, while others haven't. Some admit to feeling tired, while others are well rested. Aside from the pains, I don't know. You both agree to keep an eye out for anything unusual. Hmm. So, it wasn't necessarily the food, according to Mogger. What could it be? Luden has been sending scouts ahead, quicker and more nimble than your Varl. One rushes back just as you cross the hilltop, out of breath. Dredge! That direction! You overhear our intel, Luden. About a day away, they found a village. You ask what they're doing. Tearing the place apart, he says. Maybe a thousand of them or more, looking for gods know what. It will be a bigger fight than usual. Ludin is uncharacteristically silent, waiting for you, waiting to see what you say. Hmm. Draw some of them forward and split them. You send a small group of shield bangers to get their attention. They do. Half a day later, many dredge are giving chase up the hill and in their plotting some sort of way. You get ready to lay waste. Dredge line the battlefield. Weapons drawn, the fight seems inevitable. Take a quick head count, there must be at least 451 of them. You have 172 fighters and 434 Varal at your side. Formations again. Give the order. Start rallying your force and gather your allies to you preparing to enter the fray. We're gonna have to be more careful with who we bring. Uh, Bercy! Hey! Hi! Um... Yeah, some of us are a bit injured, so uh, maybe you could look out for Luden a little bit. Make sure you're... Or actually, wait. You could... Uh, Luden could take um, could take Gunolf's place. And uh, we, we really need to get hack on uh, promotion at some point. We need to rest at some point. This is not a good setup. Okay, you stay as far away from everyone as you possibly can. You are there. Uh, Bercy, you're up there. Yeah, this'll do. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to reach any of them. We'll just rest. Just wait for them to come to us. up there and slog and burn to your heart's desire you know considering how much space he's taken up I feel like that should have impacted him a little bit more than just one armor and two damage or two strength just saying let's do this Right in the armor. Ah, uh -oh. uh, that was a lot of strength. That was a lot of strength. Do the armor on him. Get the big ones. Oh. He ran through. Okay, that works. And Hack Hunt is still standing. That's good. Okay, Luden. Now 
for the armor. Ooh, very effective on the uh, on the surrounding people. Oh, and down goes Hakon. That's not good. Mm, actually, no. Let's not uh, get willpower. Exert yourself on this one. Why are they so effective? Hey, Irsa. Do another slag and burn right there. There we go. Perfect. Okay, that's uh, two of our guys down. Not great, not great. There we go, the ricocheting armor effects. Really? Really? That is not polite, sir. You will now die. There we go, a kill for Luden. And, uh... How? It's not enough to get back. Mm. Oh, I'm not gonna like what I'm gonna do here. I'm not gonna like this strategy at all. But I'm gonna have to do it. There we go, very effective. Oh, uh, but yours is in so much trouble. Sorry. Last will power to take down his armor completely. <laughs> Maybe there is a way you could just impale him and kick him back. There we go. It's something. Oh boy. Okay, he's still able to fight though. That works for me. Let's not use a little power on him. You impale him again. Or can you impale again? Yes, you can. Do it. Ooh, that seemed pretty good. You got this, Mogar. One more hit. Alright, you can stab him again. So do it. Uh, okay, well, it won't be effective. It won't be as effective as I'd like it to, but hey, it'll get him killed the next time. And... Okay, went for the armor. Good. Oh, you can't reach him in time. Can you attack him? No, you cannot. Damn it. It's, uh, only the spears can attack diagonally. Oh. Okay, that works. Luden. Take the big one down with your big pointy stick! Promotion for the prince! Alright, and this one... I'm actually gonna have you rest. Luden's got this one as well. I'm gonna give him a little bit of a, uh... I'm gonna little, give him a little bit of a high. You take a moment to survey the battlefield, the enemy's being pushed back all the way down the line. Probably not going to work out. And Luthen's already down, but Mogar, I think he's got this. Uh. Really? Just going for the health? Why not the armor? Go for the armor, asshole!
Okay, yeah, we, we did suffer those injuries, but hey, more people survived. It's all about more people surviving, right? Though you managed to somehow escape the vicious assault from the dredge, it doesn't give you much confidence in clearing the small town below. You hope that with many dredge out of the way, the odds will turn in your favor. We're camping, okay? We have taken a lot of injuries here, people. We need to rest. And people need to get promoted. So let's start with the promotions here, stat. Okay. You haven't killed a... Uh oh, maybe I should have given you that last kill. But, oh well. Hack on, you've been promoted. Take this promotion. And, uh, let's... Let, let's give you more... It's strength. If I'm being perfectly honest, I think you kind of need it. Okay. And Luden, you have also been promoted. Congratulations. And, uh, I am going to have you work on armor piercing and exertion. Actually, get rid of the armor piercing and go more for the uh, willpower. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. And confirm. And, uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna need to take some, uh... We're definitely gonna need everybody to rest for a little bit. One... Two... And three. Everybody is healthy. Just one more check to see if everybody is healthy. Yep, everybody's fine. Bercy is fine, Gunnolf is fine, Hakon's fine, Mulgar's fine, Luden's fine, Eric is fine, and so, and Irsa is fine. Everybody's good. Everybody's healthy. We're all good. Everything is perfect, and I think we're gonna end the video here, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. Give that like button a star if you did. Subscribe if you want more Death in Life. Be sure the bell is tolling for the until next time. Rest in peace. Bye! Enjoyed today's video? Well, there's plenty more for you to enjoy here. And if you also want to support this small channel, then there is also my Kofi, which is available, as well as a Twitter thread that gives you my commissioning info. And if you'd like some traditional art or literature, feel free to DM me on Twitter. Thank you for enjoying the video and for your viewership.